Thank you, Frank. Um, what I'm going to do is, is try to, um, to make a, um, a kind of systemic analysis of the, the issue we, are, we have here and make a difference between what was before AI and what is now with AI, if any difference at all. Um, the first thing to do is that we, we, we don't have, there's a tendency to say, well, we're in the insurance sector and this is a big sector and that's it. Um, but our parties and, and the, the parties have different interests and they have different strategies to address these interests. Uh, the three parties that I see are the insurer, the insured, and the regulator of the industry. And um, their concerns are, are, are not, not, not the same. Um, the, the insured uh, wants fairness and wants uh, value for money. Uh, the insurer uh, wants to minimize risk. And the risk is of two natures. It's the average risk, which is something to, to run in terms of, uh, I would say, cash flows in the, um, in, in the business. And also, and we have been aware of that in recent times, maximum risk. Uh, which you have to put in the um, in the uh, equation. Of course, you can reassure yourself, but the reassurers uh, themselves may not be entirely, uh, as we've seen, entirely reliable. Also, in, in times of crisis, and then it's back to um, uh, to the uh, how would I say the taxpayer uh, to to pay whatever uh, has not been taken in, into account. And we know uh, dealing with the maximum risk is something extremely difficult to deal with. Um, I remind you that AIG. Uh, the main um, the main insurance company in the United States at the time of the 2008 crisis had the uh, reserves uh, of uh, six billion dollars, which was re regarded as extraordinary. And on the day, which was uh, as far as I remember, something like the 16th or the 17th of September 2008, it was 75 billion that had to be uh, found right away. And, and the, at the end of the week, it was something like 150 or 160 billion. Uh, so. The issue is, is, is complicated. All our uh, risk uh, management uh, strategies are, uh, I, I, I was in risk management in the final sec financial sector in the United States uh, for a long time. Um, my main activity there was was uh, pricing, risk-based pricing, which is also quite relevant to what, what we're talking about now. Um, so uh, risk and profitability for the insurer, uh, fairness and good value uh, for the, uh, the um, insured. And uh, the concern of the regulator that's, is that the system uh, works well. And maybe in the background, uh, the, um, the prospect of a base maybe having to bail out uh, if things don't work according to, to, to plan. Now, the, the issue we're dealing with now, essentially, uh, is this, the, the issue of interface. Uh, what do the uh, insurer, insurer say to the regulator? What, do, uh, uh, what do, does the regulator say in, 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 in reply? And uh, what is it? What is the, the, the dialogue uh, between the customer, the insured, and the uh, insured company? And in that respect, uh, things have, um, have changed. It's, it's been the case from the very beginning between, I don't know, a service provider in the financial industry and, and the customer, uh, that the communication is very much, let's say, a diplomatic uh, exercise. Uh, what do we know and what do, what do we tell? Uh, what will the, make the, the um, what will it be that we do? which is essentially we ensure an issue for, of profitability on, on our side. And uh, what should we say about that uh, in terms of fairness to the, to the customer? And we know there have been issues. Uh, the example I've got here is not the insurance industry, it's in the mortgage industry, but it's something you may not know, but in the, um, the prime and the subprime sector of the mortgage industry in the United States, it used to be the case that the profit margin, the profit margin in the, I've, I've worked in both sectors, so I, I do know about that. Uh, the profit margin was 1% in the prime sector, and it was uh, double, 2% in the subprime, uh, with the uh, consequence that you see, the, 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 the poor pay more, the poor pay more. And um, so the exercise has always been difficult. What, what, do we, what do we know and that we may tell, and what part do we tell? 
Or is it an additional part that thinks that we're going to say, because we know it, that's very good in terms of uh, um, public relation, PR or communication, and that may not be exactly the, the case uh, in, in fact. Uh, and that goes as well, and that's also my experience, uh, that, the, um, that the business doesn't tell the regulator uh, essentially um, all, all that is going to be, be the case. I remember a situation where I said, what, what do I tell? And um, I, I was told, I mean, not as a regulator, but as part of the business, um, tell, tell them whatever, tell them whatever they want, want to hear. And that happens everywhere. That's not special to the insurance sector. So an exercise which is quite, quite difficult. Um, what do we tell? Uh, what, 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 what do we know? What the regulator demands is transparency, traceability, and Explain explainability. And the, the term of, of um, explainability, as, as was just mentioned by, by, by Maria, um, it's not the same when the business sp speaks to the regulator or when it sp speaks to the, the, the con consumer. It's not the same. It's not the same thing that the person wants to, um, to hear. Uh, once that we, we, the, the, the business is, has things as under control, knows exactly what it is doing, and the customer that, it, that it's fair. So um, I'm, I'm going to be um, brief on, on this. What was the case before, uh, before the um, before artificial intelligence. Well, there were some, um, in the insurance uh, business, it's essentially um, an, an issue of calculating the risk. What is, what is the, uh, what is the um, average amount that you have to pay when there, there's a loss? And it's a uh, op optimization and in terms of, of, uh, of profits and, 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 and losses. And uh, the, 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 um, the methods are, are traditional. They, they, they date from the 17th century. Uh, we, we know how to, how to do that already before artificial intelligence, it's not true that, that the way these calculations were made were entirely transparent uh, to the insurance uh, company uh, because they were, how would I say, they were empirical ways of do, look, looking at things. When, we, when you did uh, risk-based pricing traditionally before AI, it was very much a, how would I say, um, I guess some, some amount of guesswork. Uh, you would correct uh, something that turned out to not to be right, but it was you, you would weigh different uh, uh, factors: uh, debt to income, uh, loan to value for for a mortgage, things of that type. What is the source of the contract? Is it a broker or is it a bank? It's, it does it makes a difference, and we we made a difference between the two. One is more uh, reliable in terms of the the data. Uh, one is more reliable in terms of there's no massive incentive, there's less incentive for, for a bank uh, to be fair with price than for a broker who gets a cut on, on whatever the deal may, may be. And that was the main issue uh, around the, um, the subprime uh, crisis. So before AI, there was already an issue, an issue of explainability because even the technicians within the, um, within the firms, there were a number of things which were rules of thumb, which were things which were good custom to do this way and, and whatever, but was not necessarily something that you, you, you would tell um, to the customer, uh, to the insured. Uh, well, we do it this way because that's the way it's worked for us uh, over the years. You, you don't say that. So what's changed with uh, artificial intelligence? In terms of the explainability, and, uh, and Frank really stressed on that and, and emphasized of that, and, and, and Mario also, um, does the regulator uh, know exactly what it needs to know in terms of to understand exactly how works uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, an artificial network, um, a neuronal network? network. Um, even, even the engineers don't know exactly what's going on there. Uh, we have methods now, and that was discussed yesterday at the, book, at the, um, at the bank co committee. Uh, we have some approaches called Lime and Shap, uh, but this is not really, it's a way of going under the hood and having some, uh, again, some rules of thumb of saying, well, let's, we can interpret this or that. If we push a bit on this, that lever, we know that the, the speed will go a lot higher than if we don't. Uh, that's, that's about what, what, what we know. We don't know, uh, with, with the artificial intelligence, there's even more a notion of trust 
we need to trust that it's doing what it's supposed to do. And uh, the, some cases show that even the best people don't know exactly what happened. Uh, there was one recent case that was in November of last year, 2019, uh, with the Apple card, the Apple credit card, and there was something that went uh, totally wrong uh, as far as the customers were concerned, uh, is that the, um, the amount of money that was uh, uh, supposed to, the, the line of credit was that was assigned to women was much smaller, uh, much, much, much smaller than, 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 than for men. And um, the people didn't know uh, the Apple people uh, that were de dealing with that, the Goldman Sachs people who were dealing with the financial aspect, didn't know what had gone wrong. And the fact is that the, the uh, purchasing patterns of, of women and men are not the same. The, the shops are not the same. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the merchandise is, is not the same. And the computer who was forbidden uh, to know whether the data was coming by law, uh, coming from a woman or a man, it found out. It cre recreated from scratch a category, two categories of people, some who would go to some specific shops and some to other. And it, 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 they, they, there was no additional um, um, uh, data necessary in order, in order to, to find out. Uh, a sociologist or a philosopher came with a solution that we should ask for the gender uh, information, although it's, it's forbidden by law, but just for the pur purpose of de-biasing uh, the decision made, made by the machine. And that shows the difficulties we, we, we are in really. Uh, the machines as, the machine have access to a lot more data and uh, too, so too much, too much, too many data for us to really to, to check it all, and it will find things which we do not think to, uh, are palatable. And as I said, and I'll, I'll finish with that, the concerns of the three parties involved, insured, insurer, and regulator, are, are not the same. They represent different um, aspects, facets of the general interest, but they're not exactly the same. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, and our final speaker is going to be Rui.